I've been asked to talk about highlights. Now, as you all sort of pick up your pens and write, start to write your BTOs saying, yes, I can now go back to my office and write down what the platform's all about and what it did, tough luck, I'm not going to tell you. Because I'm going to come back and ask you, I'm going to ask a couple of you already, Welcrow and Guy, later on, as members of the platform, what are your highlights? Because that is one of the secrets of the platform, it's a member-based organisation. Um, just to go back to the rationale, because I got an email into my inbox in December 2004, go to Frankfurt and have a platform meeting. So I went up there, 20 members of the platform even then, with Secretariat, was one person for half a day, there we are, and uh, we worked on the rationale of, of, the, of the platform, which was very much about both advocacy externally and advocate, advocacy internally. And I don't think that rationale has gone away. It's come full cycle. You know, we found that within our own organisations, agriculture was getting a raw deal when it came to internal budget allocations. And I know there's a couple of ministries that are here today. You've seen your agricultural sector financing drop. We peaked a little bit when we had the World Bank's uh, agricultural uh, report. That helped. But I think that the internal advocacy in these days of tight agricultural budgets sorry, tight aid budgets, becomes very relevant. And then sitting in there, the external issue, and all of it, and we'll talk about 215 later, but the external environment for agriculture, the importance of job creation, the importance of recognising the rural-urban linkages, means that there is still a role for us to be able to communicate and extend that message about agriculture uh, as an employment and, and income generator. But talking a little bit about some of the, the highlights of the, of the last 10 years, and I'm also going to highlight things we haven't done. It's not all good news. And I'll just mention those two points. Because we were very, very fortunate yesterday to hear Julio from Chile talk about what goes on in Latin America. That's the first time we've had Latin American people in the global donor platform. We've got no one from Asia at the meeting today, apart from Ose. And we need to talk later about how we're going to build on OzAid's commitment to the platform, coming all the way from, from Canberra for this meeting, how we can build on that on the, in the, Asian, on the Asian context. Otherwise, we'll become the global donor platform for African development, where there is a need. But I was so impressed by Julio's statements yesterday about Latin America, and reflect on a very personal level, that in this very room, three years ago, we introduced, with the greatest of respect, the NEPAD New Perspectives for Africa which I heard again being introduced yesterday. So I reflect what's happened or didn't happen in the last three years about the territorial approach in Africa. Julio is ahead of the game. We need to think about how we're going to bring in that Latin American experience. And us as donors and IFAD, with our experience from Brazil, maybe need to do a much better job of extending that knowledge to platform members. So listen, some explicit and explicit highlights that Brian Baldwin thinks about. I think one of our implicit highlights of what the platform does as members, and we continually do, is our ability to recognize and respond to change. We started off as a small group. In 2008, I'm going to have to uh, contradict you here, uh, Monique, we did a strategic plan, not because of all the wonderful reasons you told us, but because an external evaluation said, you don't have a plan. What are you doing and where are you going? Now, the strategic plan has now become a vehicle for us to talk about what we want to do. And as we move into the next strategic plan, as I'm inferring, we need to think about Asia, we need to think about Africa, we need to think about issues of, and I'm not going to talk about the Global Donor Platform for Rural Transformation, we're the Global Donor Platform for Rural Jobs for Youth. That would make some of our members think, Rural Jobs for Youth. That is the driver. Oh my God. All right. <laughs> Um, Your boss is, is other, implicit, other implicit issues that we've responded to change. And again, this is contrary to yesterday afternoon's you donors are all in a mess. We have responded very well to the Paris Declaration on Country Ownership. We've responded very well to recognising that agriculture is not like health and education, which was being inferred yesterday. We recognise the role of the private sector. We recognise the, the role of marketing and value chains. We recognise the role of of, of, of civil society in the equation of how to create wealth and income and jobs in, in, in the rural areas. And we're seeing that very strongly, for better or for worse, coming through in the Committee for Food Security. 
where you have a vibrant debate, and it is vibrant, between civil society and private sector. And I'm working on the Responsible Agricultural Investment Principle. I've just come back from a meeting in Joburg. Very good debate between civil society and private sector on creating jobs for youth in sub-Saharan Africa. Now, there's, there's where we fit in, in, into, that, into that dynamic. What other changes are we very able to adjust to? We're looking at the issues of effective development and partnership. We've recognized the roles of results coming through from, from many of the donor, for the donor members. And in this room today, we've got aid units that were once standalone, AusAid, the Dutch, Canada, who've now been absorbed into other parts of their governing structures, but are here in this room today as committed to agriculture and rural development uh, as ever. So, so those are some of the, things, some of the, the, the implicit changes that we're seeing and that we've been able to adjust for. Now, I want to tell on to some of the more explicit, I think, highlights of the platform of the last 10 years. And this is why I'm going to come back and ask Waltrow and Guy, two of the other members who've been with us sometime, what are your highlights of the, of, the last, of the last 10 years? As we start to think about the future, one of the first pieces of work that the platform members put together was an excellent work on agricultural statistics put together by the World Bank and FAO. I mean, they just got together and said, we need to revamp the way that we analyze and report on ag statistics. The bank needs it, FAO needs it. Two bodies got together, produced an excellent piece of work on, on ag statistics. The CADAP initiative really has helped donors, for, again, for better or for worse, it's been a forum for donors and everyone to get together, analyze those issues, and understand the role of country ownership in, 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 in the CADA agenda. And most recently, we've seen the way that the, the land group has, has, has taken off. Again, three, for me, three explicit examples of, of what the platform has been able to do. So there we are, the platform being 10 years on, still very relevant, a lot of challenges. Post 2015, we'll discuss later today, we have a lot of thinking to do, a lot of internal departmental dialogues and dialogues externally uh, with others and what we want to see, not necessarily as goals for the ag sector, but what can we bring in terms of targets and indicators. Again, rural jobs, what would be our, and again, my question to Julio, What's your advice about 250? Break those jobs down. Break those do jobs down to, to gender. Break those jobs down to age groups. You know, the civil society groups that we interact with don't necessarily represent youth. They represent older people. How are you going to interact with young people in Africa today to create jobs in the agricultural sector? There is a, there is a, piece, of, there's a piece of work for us for, for, for next year. At the beginning, we are, have been working very close together because the secretariat was very small. So many of the tasks have to be done by the donors themselves. So it was time consuming, but also very energizing and motivating. Uh, over the time, work has been increased. Uh, and unfortunately for me, I have less and less time to get me involved with the global donor platform, <coughs> except from being a person at the annual general assembly. But I'm trying still my level best to contribute uh, to their work and I'm especially uh, concerned about uh, post-2015 uh, and how we will continue on with our work. Thank you. Just an anecdote, it was the time at the beginning of the platform FA was paying its fees because we were lucky to manage an EC project which in turn was financing the global in a platform because EC could not finance directly GIZ, GTZ at that time, which was uh, hosting the secretariat. So because we were an intermediary, we used that money to pay our fees as well. But now you can, uh, now you can contribute fully. Uh, my, my first engagement, in, uh, it, it was very much the, the kind of theme of the time. I mean, uh, was a study on uh, sector-wide approaches and uh, aid effectiveness in Tanzania. The platform had contracted a few studies in, I think, Nicaragua, uh, Burkina Faso, Tanzania, and a few others, and uh, they were presented in an annual meeting in Washington. It was also the time sector-wide approach was a, a key theme of the platform, which is, I mean, no longer anymore. And I had the feeling maybe that we were surfing on, I mean, the Paris Declaration, Accra <coughs> and Busan. Uh, and maybe Busan didn't meet all the expectations in terms of 
update, I mean harmonization and so on. Uh, since we shifted from A to development effectiveness, we have a transfer responsibility to the beneficiary functions. The, the last point maybe, which is uh, something to reflect on, has been the difficulties of the platform around talent. I mean, to identify itself vis-à-vis uh, -vis the, the so-called DPTT, the Donor and Development Partners Task Team. And uh, I could see that this morning, uh, Caleb Phase 2 was on the list of, uh, I mean, uh, where we could uh, have a look, I mean, our support in the context of territorial approaches. And I think there we have a, a, a kind of combined challenge to, yes, I mean, to sustain the so-called momentum of Caleb, but also to link it uh, for the sake of consistency and effectiveness to what Esterin presented yesterday, which is rural futures. Because the, the, within uh, the NPCA, this link is not so well established, so we should not fall, maybe it's a strong word, fall in the trap somehow of maybe having two different donor groups, one for CADEP and one for rural futures, why they come from the same NPCA, and think how basically the, the global land platform could work with NPCA as a whole rather than with a, a program of NPCA. Thank you. Uh, sorry, I really enjoyed those 10 years in attending the Thanks very much. Thank you. And so the final highlight for myself has been our work on climate. The, the platform day we had in Brussels, that led us to that excellent side event at the COP15 in Copenhagen, led by Sir Gordon Conway. Again, put climate into the platform's work plan. We haven't done a lot on it in the last 18 months. We asked at last year's AGA to look again at climate, and in the discussion on the work plan, we'll come back to that today. This is going to be an issue in terms of sustainable agriculture in response to 2015. What are we doing on the climate agenda? Thank you very much.